Um, Jen, can you tell us the name of your project? The project's called Lost Palaces. Okay, so when you're ready, I'm going to give you two minutes to pitch on your project. Just give me one second. So what I want to do is imagine even one of the spaces in the schoolyard was, or in the school was once a little bit closer, sorry. occupied <laughs> by um, a palace and then maybe about the Renaissance era and that that um, is the inspiration for creating a kind of the ghosts of the people that used to be here. And because I come from a dance background, I thought about doing some kind of Renaissance court dances. There's lots to draw on there and that we would um, film them and then use them as a projection so that they can become kind of ghostly um, people populating the space. I think that idea had for it to be more interactive was that um, the audience would be sent maybe a little text message with um, instructions on where to go and instructions on how to perform these dances. So they get to the space and a mask. And they get to the space and when they put their masks on, that's when the kind of ghostly figures appear. Um, and we can have these kind of court dances happening in that there's a form um, at the end that the performers will then invite the audience to join them. And because the audience has these, it's almost like the Chinese whispers that we were doing actually. The audience has this set of instructions. They can have their own interpretation of the way the dance should be performed and they can perform it with these ghosts that are figures maybe on the floor, on the walls, on the ceiling. Okay, thank you, that's great. Um, so my question is that these ghost-like figures, thank you, these ghost-like figures are, when you started to speak, I imagined them that they weren't real people, but now I understand that they are actually performers. Yes. And so the ghost-like nurse mm. is going to be conveyed in what way? If they're actual flesh and blood, how do we understand that they're ghost-like? What's your vision in that? I think it's through the way that they're filmed and mm -hmm. the way that they're projected I think there might be some ways of maybe softening the focus mm -hmm. or maybe using slow motion or the fact like when the mask goes on maybe they kind of slowly appear slowly materialize and um, yeah something in the in the filmmaking or in the kind of after effects mm -hmm. that we can have that and the other reason Sorry. I wanted to use projection was because it does have that kind of ephemeral quality to yeah. it, doesn't it? Absolutely. And what's the relationship then with the performer and the projection? What I mean is that what are the audience looking at? Are we looking, when do we stop looking at projections and start looking at real bodies? Or what's the shape of that? So far in my imagination, the performer is only in the projection and that the, the real bodies in the space are the audience. So right. it's the audience that then join this Kind of I see. So at no point does the audience see a real dancer. They're always looking at the projection of a real dancer. Yeah. But the real dancer is there in space, in time and space, but um, being projected into the into the uh, venue. Yeah. Right. So why would you use? Why wouldn't you use then um, a recording? It so why a, wouldn't you use a, a film? Oh, is it? But are the performers? But we need to make the recording. <laughs> I see. So it's going to be a film. So yeah. there's not. When I say live performers at the event, are no. they going? I yeah, see. Exactly. Okay. I mean, the original right. idea was to do something where the live performers were. I mean, we could. It's still an option, I guess. Sure. Because, you, <laughs> because you have a live feed that maybe somehow the live performers could be performing in another room, and you could film it, and you could yeah. live feed it onto the thing, and then maybe they could interact more with the audience. Right. But because we don't have like infrared and all these kind of things to okay. sense the audience tracking, I thought maybe a simpler version okay. could be to just make a film. Okay, well that's <laughs> a really good thing to know, I think, for the hacking process. I'm gonna open it up to the audience now. Yes, hands up, please. Because I didn't let you before. So. Um, do you think that possibly if they're, um, <coughs> sometimes the general public if they're not dancers or theatrical people that they might feel a bit reserved in getting in there and if even if they've got text messages to start dancing without any one kind of in there initiating that and drawing them into that do you think that would be a problem or have you thought about how to encourage them to do that in the space without someone yeah definitely i mean i think you're right, it's extremely problematic. The idea maybe if people come in groups or in families that it can be a fun game that they play together and that there's that 
that the other people with you can somehow spur you on. I want to create something that can be done without physical performers on site, if possible. And so as many ideas as I can generate around making people feel confident and comfortable, I don't know if it's like maybe in the text message they also get a little video, or you know, wearing a mask also makes you feel maybe a little bit more able to go outside of yourself. Um, and then in the, yeah, there has to be something really inviting and like that you really want to go into that world um, in the film that maybe like even a hand extended or something really obvious that you, you feel invited into that space without having to have somebody on site going, now is the time you can do it. Yeah, hard task. <laughs> Will there be a narrative linked to the performance? Or um, will you use the, the history of the space that you're in maybe to kind of utilize? Yeah, there definitely could be. I mean, there's loads of, I haven't thought of anything specifically, but there's a lot of stuff about um, masks were used to kind of celebrate the, um, the royalty. They were used to also um, subvert and ask questions. So there could be, I'm really open to asking more political questions and maybe even matching kind of present day concerns to have them. They, what happened was they're kind of disguised. So you're asking these political questions, but because you have these costumes and these masks and these things, you can make it funny or kind of tilt it. So yeah, I think there's scope for that definitely for a kind of narrative that could be developed. Yeah. Well, when I listen to your story, your all explanation is kind of so you're thinking about some site specific performance. I feel yeah. like so you want to order the older audience walking walking follow the your instruction or how do you want to present about the space and performance at the same time Can you repeat the question again? Uh, how, yeah. Uh, yeah 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 usually thinking about the site specific we walking through some several places and then walk, uh, see the space and the desk done and then moving to the other place but I just wonder how do you want to present your ideas? Is that exactly the same, some kinds of standard state, a standard, a standard way to presenting site specific or you were thinking about in different way to showing because you're just using recording rather than actual, yeah, actual actors or persons. So I just wonder. Let me, let me see if I can understand if I've got the question. I think that um, what the question is is that there is a vocabulary around how audiences experience site-specific work. They promenade normally, they go from one place to the other. And I think the question is, are you looking to break convention um, in that, in the audience experience of a site-specific piece? Yeah, yeah. Like, sorry. <laughs> it's like a just general site-specific style or you want to thinking about the other way to show it. Um, I'm interested in the audience maybe having a, like a personal experience so that when they, um, so they'll get this kind of text message, they will get like maybe a Google map or some kind of instruction about how to get there. So when you arrive in the space and it's like a kind of treasure that you found and when you put on your mask, that's when the figures appear. So it's, um, it's related to the people having the, uh, it's related to the audience in that way. Does, is that answering? So just to reiterate, the, the, the action of putting on the mask yeah. is what's triggering yeah. you being able to see projection. Exactly. Now, that, but that's not on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So if I put on a mask, it also might mean that other audiences also see what I see. Yes, that's okay. true. Yeah. When, when I hear you say it, I'm thinking Wow, you could you could actually have several different Renaissance dances in different parts of a, a building, and you could combine the, the the instructions for the dance rather than through text. You could give give them a little earpiece that went on the mask, and you could and then you could talk them through the dance and talk them through the wonder, so that you got a bigger thing. And that might be a more practical way to actually. Manage yeah, it's it. that's really interesting because then you can incorporate the music as well. Like, it definitely was in my head, and I, I think I somehow lost that along the way. That this voice in your ear, like telling you about 
what the space looked like because obviously it doesn't look like this. What is the music? What and then and back to your question with how do you get people to really do it? Yeah. Or maybe it does. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Round of applause for Jen, please, and her project. Okay, and need can you bring one of your chairs up as well? Thank you.